Hey, Paul Cook here, your local listing estate and probate expert with your weekly vlog. Every week we'll be addressing a real estate and related topic. So if you have questions or something that you want to be addressed, please feel free to call, text, or email me your questions and maybe we can get that on in an upcoming vlog. Now this vlog is also in a blog on my website, paulcook.exprealty.com. That's Cook with an E. And if you prefer it in writing, then you'll want to go there. And some of the topics we're going to cover are going to be lists and, and they're going to have uh, email links and things like that. So you might want the written copy. If you find these things helpful, you can go and check out the weekly live interviews that are separate from this that I have with experts in all things real estate, probate, and expert, uh, estate. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, my intent, as always, is to provide content that's useful, helpful, and instructive, as well as maybe entertaining, and also people and websites and books and other things that may assist you. Uh, we handle everything real estate, probate, and estate all in one place. So let's dive in. What happens to all your stuff? Die. Part two. Uh, part one of the blog, just as a reminder, addressed the, the need for an estate plan and how to go about getting that done. Of course, some of that's going to depend on your unique situation. This week, let's look specifically at what happens with real estate when you die. So when you mix in real estate with estate plans and probate, it does complicate the issues involved with real estate. When real estate is part of an estate plan, then the process forward needs to take into account the deceased's will, the heirs, and the predetermined distribution stated therein. So let's look at some of this. If, if there is an estate plan, most times the distribution process of the real estate has been defined. And if that's the case, then follow it. Yet, there are going to still be complications that can arise. So let's take a look at a few of those. One of the complications is when there are multiple heirs. And when the home or property is distributed to two or more heirs, you can run into all kinds of situations where one wants to sell, while others may want to lease, and still others might want to move in or they already actually live there. Each one brings unique challenges, so let's flesh these out just a little bit. If there's one who wants to keep it while the others want to sell, there is the option of selling the one share of the home to the others who want to keep it. Of course, they have to be able to either get qualified for a mortgage or have the cash to purchase it outright. And if you're going to want to get it appraised or you know, get a current market analysis, this is something that a good real estate professional can help you get done. I'm raising my hand. And it's best to have an attorney draw up the papers. And I have some excellent attorneys that I can recommend as well. What if one of the heirs wants to move into the home and use their part of the inheritance as rent? Again, that depends on the others. If they want or need to sell it, or they're willing and able to lease it to them. Again, you need to make sure an attorney drafts the paperwork and that you have an accurate value of what the rent should be, even if everyone has already agreed on a price. You might think you don't need a legal document to move forward, because you can trust your siblings. I've seen numerous incredible relationships put to the, to the test and even fall apart because they handled it, handled it on their own. And, and things were misunderstood or misapplied. So my strong, strong encouragement is to get an attorney involved to draft the documents. They are a third party. They have no specific loyalty to one person over the other, and they will ask questions you all most likely won't think of or might not think are worthy to address and it just protects everyone involved. Then there's the circumstance where one of the heirs already lives in the home. This can be very challenging to resolve. Again, there may be the need for an attorney and in many instances there will be. Especially if they insist on remaining in the home and other heirs need to sell the home or there are outstanding debts uh, the state needs to address and the equity in the home needs to be used to pay those. Needless to say, this can also put a great deal of stress on relationships. If the decision is made to sell, there are different decisions that need to be addressed, different issues. Do you sell it as is? Do you do some cleanup and sell it? Or some cleanup with calculated return on investment repairs? If you want to do repairs, 
and some of dating at the home, where does the money come from to pay for all of this? Also, where does the money come from for utilities, maintenance, and taxes? The longer it takes for the estate to be settled, the greater the expenses are that eventually needs to be covered by the estate. And this gets pretty involved, so we'll take a look at this in more detail, detail in the coming uh, vlogs, coming weeks. As always, if you or someone you know has questions concerning real estate or you are considering selling or buying a property, call or text me at 706 714 8553 and I'm happy to help however I can. You can also email me at pauldcook at gmail.com. Have a great week. God bless you. See you next week.